A little while ago I was asked if I could do a quick video on how to attach leathers uh, to steel. So I'm going to take a quick look at four different ways of making that happen. It's important when you do this that you choose a uh, leather that's fit for purpose. All too often you see thin little straps like this which are supposed to hold armour on uh, to a person. A test I was given uh, by a chap that trades in leather was to get a Stanley knife make a nick all the way through somewhere and then see if you can pull it apart where that nick is. If you can't then it's certainly good enough uh, to go making straps out of. The uh, next thing to do is to consider the leather itself. Now like I said this is made from some old bits that I had and it's quite furry on the underside. You want to try and get rid of that if you can. There's nothing worse I think when a person gets a bit of armour off you and it looks all fluffy on that underside. But it's not a showstopper as long as it's strong and functional. Um, but you need to tidy up the ends. Now where the ends are uh, hidden in the armour or they're going to have the nails and so on, often you find on a lot of medieval pieces they would just cut off the two corners there. What you end up with is something that looks like that just tidies it up and also stops those edges fraying back on themselves. So you see that a lot. Uh, on the actual strap ends you see all sorts of bits. So this would be where the buckle uh, goes through. I've seen examples where it's simply just cut like that to assist you getting through. Maybe tidied up on the other side. Or certainly seen this on a couple. It's just cut like that. So just take your pick and stick with it for a while and see how you get on. Now throughout this I'm pretty much going to be using these small nails. Uh, they're modern clout nails. Uh, they've been galvanised and what I've done is pulled the galvy off the uh, front. I think uh, it just looks so obviously out of place. And what you can do with these if you want to as well is shape them. You see this one here, I've squared them off a little bit more, a little less obviously modern uh, than perhaps that type. Got a squared one and the round one. And what you can do as well is you can decorate them uh, with filing and so on. But it's important that these fixings, and in fact the choice of the leather and how the leather is finished and so on, are commiserate to what you're making or who you're making the armour for. An archduke is not going to, or is unlikely to be running around with basic nails in his armour. He'd have highly decorated pieces there. A foot soldier who's been running around and do a few battlefield repairs, you'll start to see all manner of fixings in there where straps have been replaced. So just always be aware that the fixings for these straps are almost as important in some respects as the finish on the armour. Choose ones that are appropriate to the position of the armour that you're making. So what I've done is marked a hole, drilled a hole into the material where we're going to attach the leather to. Uh, I've made the hole slightly larger than the nail, just makes it easier to push them through there. And what I like to do on the reverse is take a drill bit about twice the size of the hole and give it a couple of twists. Now if you're doing hundreds of these, get this in a drill and use the drill to do it. But just on a one-off like that, it's fine. Just countersink there. Straps can have a tremendous amount of force and stress put on them as the user moves around. You don't want them pulling out, so uh, you countersink it in and it gets that much more bite on the uh, piece. As mentioned before, tidy up the ends of the leather. Stop them curling up and looking horrible. And then we'll get to fixing. First thing to do is just drop your hole into the leather. and then rivet it on. Now in this instance the strap is on the surface of the material so we'll be riveting on the underside. It's very straightforward. Put the plate like that, you've got the countersink there, the countersink there that you've already done. Just snip off the top. Oh, cool. On the top of the nail and take a reasonable ball pin, nice flat surface ball pin, not too pointy like that nice flat one and just work it down
Put it around the outside, remove any burrs. And because you've countersunk that, you can take it all the way down to the surface or just remove some of the surface material if you've got too much, if you're worried about it. And then, if you do that, just take a flat hammer and gently work the surface. And you can keep going until that's actually flush with that if you wanted to, but I don't see the point for this. And there is a strap securely fixed to your armour. Now, it might be that you want it to have some movement, in which case, just don't rivet it as hard. And I wouldn't countersink it, just put it on there with a washer and you can get the strap to rotate then as you need it to. On to the second one. There's not a lot of difference in this one except the strap is just going to go underneath. So in this case, just take one of your clouts, one of your nails on the underside, pop it through, remove some of the excess material. You can use much longer nails than this I just use these because I don't end up with thousands of shanks everywhere. Make sure you've got enough material there to go. Remember, this would be a polished piece of material, might have fluting on it, whatever. So be careful not to strike the surface. Just start off easily and then make your way around nice and gently. Now it's important as you go around, you fill the hole as you see it, there's a little bit here that I can still see, so it's important that that's done, otherwise you could pull the shank through. So I've just moved some of that material across, I'm just covering it. Check for burrs. Tidy it back a bit, now if you wanted to smooth that off a bit, take a Flatter hammer. Just walk it around. There you go. A bit smoother. You can buff that back. You can do it. You can mess around with a rivet set, turn it into a rivet head if you wanted to. But not everything was rivets on the surface of metalwork. You could, again, because we've countersunk, buff that right back and go. But as it's a strap, I'd be worried about it. Be a little nervous with the countersink there. Um, not being perhaps just strong enough, but that's again another technique on how to put your straps onto your armour there. We'll take a look at a third one, seen a lot through um, 14th and 15th century. So you'll see this sort of slot nigh uh, strap connection all through the 14th and certainly into the 15th century makes resurgences now and then as different folk liked it or didn't or trying to do something different I guess than what's gone before and it's a very straightforward one to make and then all you do is you take your strap punch it through the slot put the nail on push it in make sure the strap is nice and tight There you go, and then just peen the head back. Now you could use a nice rivet here, I'm just using a nail for speed, get a nice rivet head on the front there, and then you put a washer on the back to hold it to the leather, but just for the speed now, I'm keeping it going with these. Check for burrs. There you go. A fairly simple slot and eye strap in connection. So, on this last one, then I've already set the hole and we're just going to do a slightly posher version. All I've done is I've taken a piece of material, a piece of brass here, turned it into a washer, just crimped the edges to give it a bit of a a different look, done the same to the leather work 
and done. Now, I'm not saying that this would be the sort of thing that a duke, an earl or so on would be wearing, but it's a way of affordably, for most modern folk, tidying up their washers and making things look nice without spending too much of your own time doing it. If you were doing those high status uh, armors, you really need to be looking into cast pieces that are gold uh, plated or gold covered or brass cast or that sort of business. And that's a totally different kettle of fish. You certainly wouldn't have a bit of just natty old Feeblings dye here, I think it is. I've used, I think it's Feeblings. Yes, Feeblings. Uh, green dye there. I've just done that for a bit of contrast to there. You'd be looking to perhaps have these covered um, in silks and satins or other materials. Um, but just for an affordable way of tidying up a person's armour and making it look a little bit nicer for them if that's what they're after. Uh, affordable for both you and the customer. Just do something like that. Paint the rivet which again would be a, a brass covered steel rivet. Or maybe even plated. And there you go. Down the bottom there. So we'll take a quick look at the tools and then we're done. So to uh, create these uh, four different ways of putting straps onto uh, metal work, uh, I use the following tools. We'll take a look, see which ones you can do without, see which ones you actually need. Uh, I used a peening hammer and then a flattening hammer. You could do away with one of those. You can flatten or you can peen quite well with this little hammer and you can flatten relatively smoothly with this one. So you only need one hammer there. Uh, the chisel I used for the slot and the slot and eye, so although he's, he's part of this, he's not really part of riveting, it's just I put in there because I did use it. Uh, I used a drill and a punch uh, to make the holes, but you can certainly do away with one of those. I just used the file to uh, file a notch or two into the rivet just to tidy it up a touch but you certainly don't need that trusty old sharpie can't do without them leather you need snips you're going to need to make the peening easier a hole punch for the leather of some description just to help countersink the rivet, don't need it, you can countersink if you're feeling brave enough with the sharp end of that. So we'll put away that. And a set of metal cutters just to cut our material, but I guess that's for a separate thing, but he's made it on the table so we'll leave them in for now. So there really is the tools that you need to be able to strap relatively effectively. I guess in some respects you could even do away with these if you don't have them because you can nail these straight in to the material and then peen them. So there you go, the tools that you require to be able to attach leather straps to metal.